If you've been gardening for just about any time at all, you probably recognize that it makes you feel better. You like doing it. And did you know that there are many studies that show that gardening can improve your health? Join me today as we discuss that part of gardening, mental health and physical health, and how it can help you live longer. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I am a gardener. And I think by being a gardener, it makes me happier and healthier than many people I know who are not gardeners. And based on the many, many comments that I've received from viewers over the years, there are a lot of others like me who garden and are happier and healthier. But the nice thing about feeling this way as a gardener is knowing that there's actual scientific research that backs us up, that shows gardening really does have benefits. Like many gardeners, I just enjoy spending time in the garden, next to my plants, contemplating nature. And many studies have shown that when people just spend time in a garden, well, their anxiety levels drop and they feel less depressed. There are many hobbies, many activities that people can choose to help achieve the same results, but gardening may be among the best. A 2011 study had participants exposed to stressful situations, and then they could choose either reading or gardening to help them out. Those that chose gardening showed a greater decrease in their stress levels. Another study went with participants in a rehabilitation center, and they could choose art or gardening as part of a natural therapy in their program. Those that chose gardening had higher levels of completing rehab. At more and more medical treatment facilities for veterans, the Veterans Administration is using gardening as part of the therapy to treat PTSD. And research has shown that those that are participating in a garden setting do have lower levels of stress. This corresponds with a lot of those comments I've received over the years. The number of people who have shared their stories with me, particularly those who have PTSD from a number of situations, who tell me that the garden has saved their life. Their garden has brought them closer to normal. After that severe stress, a garden is a place of refuge. More and more hospitals are promoting healing gardens on the hospital grounds, not just for patients, but for family and staff as well. There is research that shows that gardeners have less inflammation than non-gardeners. And inflammation in our body has been shown to be a contributor to chronic disease. Vitamin D that gardeners get from the sun not only strengthens our bones, but it strengthens our immune system. Higher levels of vitamin D show a decrease in many types of cancer, including breast, bladder, colorectal, and prostate cancer. Low levels of vitamin D show higher risk of not only cancer, but type 2 diabetes as well. We all know we're supposed to exercise. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, identifies gardening as a moderate intensity exercise. Just two and a half hours per week can lower your risk of obesity, type two diabetes, heart disease, osteoporosis, stroke, and depression. Well, if you're a gardener, especially with a big garden, probably doing more than two and a half hours of that exercise per week. While the size of our garden does have a correlation to how much work is required in the garden, I think most of us just like doing it, which is why we come out here so often. And that might help explain some of the research that shows that gardeners spend 
40 to 50 minutes more per week engaging in that exercise activity than those who use biking or walking as their primary form of exercise. You may already be aware that regular exercise can actually improve cognitive functioning within the brain. Well, new evidence suggests that gardening may actually promote the growth of nerve cells associated with memory. Researchers in Korea gave patients with dementia gardening-related activities and afterward noted an increase in brain nerve growth factors that are associated with memory. Another way that gardening improves cognitive functioning is that the mere act of gardening requires us to learn more. And it's through that learning and acquiring knowledge that we're challenging our brain. And particularly as we get older, it's an opportunity to read, to research, to experiment, to actually get our fingers in the dirt and learn what we're doing. And all of that learning is making our brain healthier. For people combating loneliness and the depression that often accompanies that, gardening may be one of the best things that you can do. Through community gardens and garden clubs, people get together. Gardeners meet other gardeners and you're no longer alone. I had a number of people in the past when I was teaching community classes come up to me and share with me exactly that. They were elderly and alone, maybe with no family at all, but they could come to my classes and they could come to the Galileo School Garden as a volunteer and it relieved their loneliness. They felt better. They knew they were giving back to their community. There is research to show that gardeners eat healthier. We're eating what we grow, so we have more vegetables in our diet and we eat more of them with greater variety. And I've seen that firsthand. At the Galileo School Garden, those kids who wouldn't even touch a vegetable in the school lunch program or maybe even at home were devouring the vegetables that they themselves planted and tended and harvested. It just makes sense, not only for your own family with the kids, but the people around you. Grow fresh produce, you'll eat more of it, and you'll be healthier. I've also observed the hugely positive impact that gardening has on kids with special needs. At the Galileo School Garden, the students that used the garden the most were the special needs kids. There was one in particular who was on the autism spectrum, couldn't communicate, was actually quite violent during the school day to most of the teachers. But when he came out to the garden in the morning and just spent 30 minutes in the sensory garden next to the little fountain that I had built, he would be calm for the rest of the day. He showed progress in his learning. He even showed progress in his communication. I had kids come out to the garden in wheelchairs, also with communication issues, and they were unable to participate in normal classes. Wow, by being in the garden, in a wheelchair, holding a hose and just watering plants, they could join their classmates and they were better at participating and also showed improvement in communication. I'd say gardening changed their lives for the better and potentially even saved their future. One of my loyal followers and gardening friends, Brian, has shared a heartwarming story with me about how gardening has saved his life. After losing his business during COVID and with resulting physical problems, life wasn't as good as it was before until he found gardening and the garden makes his life meaningful. And it's meaningful to the environment and meaningful to the people whose lives his garden touches. He loves playing the violin, but he can't play it as well as he did. But when he comes out to the garden and plays his violin, it's all 
great. All of those wonderful memories and feelings come rushing back with his beloved violin in the garden. I've had moments like that too, just a peaceful time where it's me confronting my life and what's ahead. And the garden brings the solace, the comfort. It brings all of those wonderful feelings that we all wish we had. Well, you can have it in the garden. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.